Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get better audio out of your microphone. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, I will be showing some tips that are much easier to do and a few more advanced tips, but I will show you how to do absolutely everything, so hopefully some of these tips will be helpful to you. Now for the very first tip, you will notice an immediate improvement in your audio quality. And that is just simply speaking closer to your microphone. The closer you are to your mic, the better it will pick up your voice and less of the room around you. For example here, I'll move away from the microphone and you'll immediately notice a decrease in the quality of my audio. It's now picking up echoes from my room, my voice is bouncing around the room and not specifically right to the microphone. The audio sounds worse. The microphone is not necessarily suited to pick me up from this far away. So the closer I get, as I continue speaking here, you will notice an immediate improvement in audio quality. And to determine how far away you should be from your microphone is pretty easy. Microphones differ, people's voices differ. So just record yourself talking into your microphone from various distances and find out what works best for you. For tip number two, don't speak directly into the microphone. And I don't necessarily mean, you know, have the microphone positioned here and then sit away from the microphone and have the microphone try to pick up my voice from the room. That's not going to work very well. What I mean is don't have the microphone directly in front of your mouth to where you're breathing on the microphone. If I'm close to the microphone like this and I say something like popsicle, the air from my voice is going to blast into the microphone and it's going to pick up all of that air noise and not sound very good at all. So what I do is I have it slightly angled away from me so that the air passes over the microphone, but it will still pick up my voice. My microphone is slightly off center. The front of the microphone is here and it's picking up everything going this way, which I'm talking this way, so it should be picking up my voice absolutely fine. But the big thing here is if you put your hand in front of your face and talk and say something like popsicle or blast, you will feel that air against your hand. And if your microphone is in the way of that, it's going to be picking up all of that air pressure onto its little sensors. For the third tip, if you're in a room with a lot of echo and you can't eliminate the echo, try putting some things in your room. And I'm not joking here. For example, I've got a hardwood floor, my walls, there's not really a whole lot on them. And there is a lot of echo in this room. The closer I am to the mic helps reduce that echo. But at the same time, sometimes I do get a bit of echo. And a good way to kind of remove that is to put things in my room. For example, if I put a chair with a blanket on it, that actually helps absorb some of the sound. If I put a few chairs with blankets on it, it really helps absorb the sound. You can pick up those little foam squares that you stick to your wall to help kind of reduce echo. But if you don't want to buy anything, you can just use, for example, a blanket and just throw it on the ground in lieu of an area rug. Anything really to help absorb sound as opposed to reflecting the sound will help reduce the overall echo in your room. My next tip is a two-parter, but it has to deal with the physical setup of your microphone. For example, my Blue Yeti microphone came with this stand here. This stand is actually really nice. It's fully metal. It's a heavy duty stand, but at the same time, the problem is that there is no shock absorption in this stand at all. It transfers all of the noise from my desk directly into the microphone. You can hear all the little bumps. You can hear pretty much anything I place onto my desk transfer up into the microphone. It's not a great experience. There are two ways to fix this. The first way is the cheap and easy way that may or may not work depending on your setup. But what you could do is get an old cloth, fold it up and tuck it underneath the base of the microphone stand. So the microphone will sit on the old cloth and then on your desk. That'll help dampen the sounds traveling up through your desk into the base of the microphone stand. It won't protect any of the sounds though that hit your microphone stand directly. Like anything really that touches the base of this stand will still travel up into your mic. The second thing to do is maybe look at a microphone arm. So I have one right now attached to my microphone. There is no shock mount. The shock mount would help exponentially uh, but at the same time, this microphone arm does help lift it off my desk, so I'm no longer getting that desk sound, anything touching my desk, into the microphone. The second thing about a microphone arm, and probably the most important thing, is that it makes it incredibly easy to position the microphone to pick up the best sound possible. I don't have to stack my microphone stand on a bunch of books or something to kind of raise the mic closer to my mouth. I can position it away from the keyboard or a mouse or anything like that. On top of that, I can position my chair pretty much anywhere 
and have the microphone follow me around with minimal effort and maximum effectiveness. If your microphone has a lot of settings, make sure you're using the proper setting for your environment. For example, this microphone here has a ton of different settings. Right now, I can change it so it picks up everywhere. I can change it so it picks up directly in front and behind, but I don't need any of those settings. I just need it to pick up directly what's in front of me. So I have it switched to that specific setting. So take a look at your microphone. Make sure it's set to the setting that you're using. The next tip I have is to use some sort of audio mixer. Whether it's hardware or software, it doesn't matter. Either one will help out your audio greatly. I'm using a USB mic plugged directly into my computer, and the software that I like to use is Voice Meter. I will leave a link to this in the description below, but this software is a game changer. And with Voice Meter here, there are a ton of different options. What I do recommend is picking up virtual audio cable, so downloading and installing these drivers, as well as either Voice Meter or Voice Meter Banana. Both of those give you a ton of different options in order to help out the audio that is coming from your microphone. I personally, I just use Voice Meter because it's easy and quick, but if you want a lot of control, I do recommend using Voice Meter Banana. Voice meter will make any microphone sound better. And I'm not joking when I say that I really mean any microphone. For example, this one here, this is a $5 microphone that I picked up on clearance about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And it is absolutely awful. Like this is a garbage microphone. Um, it's not good at all, but voice meter does make it sound a lot better. So here is a very basic voice meter setup. I really didn't change a whole lot here. I'm not using voice meter potato or voice meter banana for this video. I'm just kind of showing an easy and quick way to get it working. Voice meter does take a lot of time when you are configuring it for your own voice. Everyone's voices are different, so the settings from one person to another in voice meter won't necessarily be the same. You will have to tweak and kind of play around until you get it set perfectly for your voice. Once you've installed the virtual audio cables and installed a version of voice meter, whether it's banana potato or just the normal one, uh, set your hardware input right here in this category here to your microphone. So mine is a blue Yeti that I'm using and you can see it's picking up under number one here, microphone Yeti stereo mic. From there, make sure whatever audio program you are using is referring to voice meter for its audio input. You can change your default speaker on your system and flip it over to voice meter, or you can change it specifically in the program that you're using. For example, I'm using OBS and I have right now my device set to voice meter output. So for me here, this is automatically now picking up my voice meter audio mixing software as opposed to my microphone. If I was to switch this over to my microphone, you will hear an immediate difference. So now it's picking up audio directly from my microphone as opposed to voice meter, and you can hear the difference between the two sources. So right now, for example, my voice meter is up and running. You can see it up and running right here, but the audio input for the program that I'm using, I've switched it over just to the standard microphone to kind of show you the difference. As soon as I switch it over to voice meter, you will notice an immediate difference in overall microphone quality, overall voice quality, because that's what the mixer, the equalizer is kind of doing. To further show the power of voice meter, I'm just going to quickly change one setting here and you'll see the difference immediately of the tone from my microphone and how much different it sounds just by changing one setting. So ultimately you will have to play around with this for quite a while to make sure you find a setting that works properly for your voice. Everyone's voice is kind of different and everyone sounds a little different on different microphones. To show how powerful mixing software can be, I've now hooked up the $5 microphone and I'm recording audio right through the microphone. It's not a very good microphone, it's not a very powerful microphone, but mixing software can help things out greatly. Here is the same microphone running through voice meter and hopefully you can hear a difference in audio quality. I can also change the settings in voice meter just like I did with the Blue Yeti to change the overall tone of this microphone and to help try to maybe clear things up and improve things. Really at the end of the day with this one, I'm going to have to play around quite a bit because it is a cheaper microphone and not as capable to really make it sound as best as it can. But you can see just at an initial standpoint how much the audio mixing software helps with the overall sound of this. But anyways, that is all I have for today. Now these are pretty basic and beginner friendly tips. Hopefully they will 
will help you out in some way, shape or form. I will also say it always helps to have a friend or a family member listen to your recording of your setup and to see if it sounds actually close to your voice or not. The main goal here is to have the microphone sound as close as to your real speaking voice as possible. If you have any tips, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure myself as well as others would probably like to hear them. If these tips helped you out at all, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.